Hello and welcome to MaxSurf Webinar 5, Video 1 on Damage Stability. This month we're taking a look at damage stability analysis, and first we need to understand the effect of damage on the vessel. When we carry out damage, it applies in all of the analysis types except for tank calibrations and floodable lengths. So even though floodable length actually helps us to plan a mitigation of damage, in fact the analysis itself is carried out on the intact model. The same applies to tank calibrations. But for all the other analysis methods, Hydromax uses the lost buoyancy method. This is the method prescribed by the IMO, and what it requires us to do is to deduct the buoyancy of the flooded tanks and compartments from the model. So in this picture here we see a red cross section which shows a damaged area, and so we assume that all the buoyancy of that area is lost to the model. If the damaged area is a tank, we also assume that the contents of the tank are emptied entirely into the ocean, and that the volume of the tank is then filled with seawater up to the design water line, which is the yellow line on this picture. We also assume that the flooding is instantaneous up to that sea level. Uh, we don't consider any intermediate flooding at this stage. The easiest way to understand the loss buoyancy method is to take a look at the buoyancy curve that we get when we carry out a longitudinal strength analysis in Hydromax. So let's switch over to Hydromax and we see here a vessel which has its engine room damaged and we're carrying out a longitudinal strength analysis. If I run that analysis we'll see that due to the damage in the engine room the vessel trims down by the stern and if we take a look at the graph window we see the usual curves associated with longitudinal strength. We can see that we've got a buoyancy curve here and it's clear that that buoyancy is the intact buoyancy of the hull. But we also have a curve here in green which is the damage curve and that shows how much buoyancy is lost at different positions along the vessel due to the damage. So in this zone here where the engine room is damaged we can see that there's a significant amount of buoyancy which is being lost to the vessel. The net effect of that is that when we combine together the load on the vessel minus the buoyancy and we also account for the damage then our net load curve will show the effect of that damage being removed from the vessel. So our buoyancy method then, our loss buoyancy method, removes this volume from the vessel and then applies the usual calculation methods. That shows the basic effects of loss buoyancy and damage in Hydromax. Thanks for watching.